Hi, this is Brandy Steele with Kyra Walk, and this is Jack Steele. This is my 13-year-old son who is a high-level soccer athlete, 13 years old. He has been so generous with his time to demonstrate the Faber test. And what we're going to show you is not necessarily just how to perform the test, but more importantly, why would you perform this test? And at the very end, I'm going to give you a quick tip that I use with my young athletes to help prevent hip issues moving forward. So let's start off with the Faber test. The Faber test is very sensitive for identifying does someone have a hip problem? Jack, can you go ahead and lay on your back for you? Faber test is normally done with the leg over the opposite leg and let the knee fall passively into extra rotation as you support the opposite ASIS. So I'm gonna let his leg drop down and I'm gonna give him a little bit of overpressure. One little quick tip is that a lot of patients don't like this. This puts patients in a lot of external rotation if they're already having pain. Sometimes I'll let them drop their knee down to the side and then once again, letting them passively go as far as they wanna go. Once again, to, for the test, you do have to support the opposite hip and push down. What you're looking for is a lack of range of motion, which we're seeing here, um, but we're also looking for where is the pain and what is happening to the pain. So in this case, let's talk about the first one where we increase pain in the groin. When you increase pain in the groin, there's really one of two options. The first is an intra-articular issue, which is our cartilage issues, our osteoarthritic issues. Probably not the case with a 13 year old. The second is actually a labral lesion. When you have a labral lesion and the front part of the hip, which is the most common site for a labral lesion, has a tear, a defect, um, some fraying there, and you go and stretch it, that doesn't feel very good. Um, so you're gonna have an increase in pain in the groin. Uh, now, what we can we do with this kind of pain? Well, if it's pain in the groin, and they're of a certain age, uh, decreased activity, high BMI, uh, like I said, older age um, and not very active, radiographs are gonna be the next option to make that diagnosis of an osteoarthritis. If I think it's a labral lesion, which in this case it could possibly be, I move to a posterior impingement test. Jack, can you go on your side and face the wall, uh, facing the camera? And what I would do is I block his hip, normally I just sit on the table with him, and I'm gonna slowly bring his leg back and force them into a little bit of internal rotation, and once again, looking for reproduction of the pain in the front part of the hip. If both those are positive, I have a very sensitive and a very specific test that I have a labral lesion. Once again, if you're looking for what kind of imaging or advanced testing can I do to identify a labral lesion after this test, check out Cataropus in the, uh, uh, the diagnostic imaging section. Jack, can I go back on your back, please? Now, let's say this. Let's say you go do your Faber test. It comes out to here. He's having some hip pain. Hey, that feels better. So in this case, he had groin pain. I do Faber test and now he has less pain. Now he has a very high likelihood, and especially in his age group, of having something called FAI, femoral acetabular impingement. So I have a sensitive test to say, hey, he's got a hip problem. You know, so the symptoms change. What's a specific test to identify, is he having actual compression issues at the anterior superior part of the femoral acetabular joint? And I can do FADIR test. FADIR test, I'm gonna bring the leg up, and I'm gonna now, instead of abduction, I'm gonna bring him into adduction, 10 degrees of adduction, and a little bit of internal rotation, and you can probably see how much Jack enjoys it when I do this. Now, he doesn't have any um, impingement syndrome. He just happens to have a dad who has an x-ray suite at his office. So we've uh, screened that out. Um, however, that would be a great sensitive test with Faber test to identify a hip problem, a specific test with Fadir test to identify impingement syndrome. Now, the last one that we talk about in this blog, which is a little less no lesser known, is the identifying uh, sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Let's say I go through here and I bring him back like this and he has pain, but it's not in his groin. In this case, it's in the sacral area, right in the ipsilateral buttock region. Now he has a positive test for an SI joint dysfunction. We all know Laszlo's uh, clinical rule for SI joint dysfunction, which is three or four tests. 
However, we just had a recent paper published that if we can do this test to identify uh, posterior buttock pain backed up with thigh thrust test, that you could possibly have an SI joint dysfunction. I'm going to perform this on the opposite side just so you can see it. However, I'd perform it on the same side if I weren't doing this video right now. Thigh thrust test is when you bring the leg up and I'm actually going to roll him towards me. I'm going to support underneath his sacrum with my hand and give him a pushing uh, down action, a, a, a A to P a shear, which is going to shear right through that SI joint looking for reproduction of symptoms. So, we have the possibility with one test, the Faber test, to identify three separate pathologies of the hip. A powerful test. Now, I told you I was gonna offer you one thing, and that is with these kind of patients, where you go through and you identify something's wrong with them, and there's still nothing structural. Now, in a young athlete, in a soccer athlete, lack of hip extension is a big one. Lack, lack of um, hip exhortation is another big one. So here are two stretches that I do in my office that give me a great clinical assess in improving these ranges of motion that are often lost. The first is external rotation. I had the patient down here and they bring it out like this, regardless of their dysfunction, as long as I'm not causing any kind of sharp pain. I can still support the ASIS. I can take my hand and with a line of drive directly through his femur and push in. By creating compression there, it's gonna cause a lot less pain. He's gonna take his knee with 10% of his force and push up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and do that. He's gonna hold for about seven to 10 seconds and then relax. And as he relaxes, I'm just gonna let his leg drop a little further down and then push up again. He's gonna hold for about seven to 10 seconds and then he's gonna relax. And then once again, I'm gonna take advantage of post isometric relaxation and let it drop down a little further. That's my favorite go-to stretch for external rotation. And we can also do one for internal rotation. However, I let the patient self-direct this one. Jack, can I have you go on your knee, uh, right knee down, and I call in that runner stretch that we talked about. I'll bring his left leg up to here, having him separate his feet a little bit, create a little good base of support. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna be up nice and tall. He's gonna try to bring the front of his hip in um, front of his uh, nose. So he's bring that back and then come back forward. And again, and relax. And again, really working into that hip. The cool part about this is if you really wanna force a little bit of hip extension, along with some internal rotation spin, as you will have when you sprint, is you can take this foot and you can bring it out just a little bit more forcing some internal rotation of that femur, and once again, just having them lean forward and back and forward and back. Take a seat from me, kind of check. So the cool part about this is you can get one test, you can get three different diagnoses, and from that, we can uh, have uh, a chance to treat it. If you ever come across these three diagnoses, use the Chiro Up Condition Reference and the Condition Report to educate your patients just as much as you educate yourself. So hopefully we can get the best clinical results and patient satisfaction. Thanks for watching. And thanks, Jack, for being a good sport.